Hey, my name is Itai, and in this demo, what we learn to do is how to take any existing bit component you may already have that you want to make it available through Model Federation for Runtime Composition and actually do it. The reason this works is that bit components can produce multiple types of artifacts. By default, bit creates a package artifact for each component. However, using the application plugin, you can generate an additional bundle as a plugin for any particular component you want. This means that any component is able to use both in runtime or build time depending on your specific consumer needs. So you don't force people to a specific technology or you don't force people to a specific workflow. They can actually use whatever tools and methods are relevant for their specific needs. With that in mind, let's go to our IDE and show exactly how to achieve just that. What I have here in this IDE is a very small bit workspace with a very basic component called my component. In this case, this is a React component, but this can be any type of component. And what we will do in this demo is we'll enhance this and add an application plugin and use the Model Federation RSpec base plugin to make this available in runtime. To do that, we first, first thing first, we'll create a new file in my component. That file will be my component.bitapp.ts. It's important to have the bit-app.ts file in this component, as what we want to do is we want to make sure that bit is able to understand this is a plugin file for bit. All right, so here, first thing first, I import the plugin. Um, you can install it and fetch the installation instructions directly from the documentation, and I'll post the link down below. And let's start using the plugin. So what we want to do, is we need to export default mfreact.from and pass it a configuration object. So first thing, we need a name for this application. Let's keep the name my component to have consistency with the name of our component, but this can be any name that you prefer for this application. Now we need to decide what is the client route. Effectively, um, Bit by default has a package route for every component. This is the index file for a package route. For a client route, we need an application route. So um, we don't have one, but let's declare it and later we'll create the application route. The client also. We'll call it uh, my component dot app root. And this is just a pattern, it's not something that is actually needed. Dot JS because it's going to be an ESM. And uh, lastly, we'll add the model federation configuration. So, model federation, and we pass a configuration object. Right now, we're just going to keep it simple. We're just going to expose a single um, endpoint uh, module for this. So, Exposes, and we're just going to follow the model federation guidelines. And I'm just going to expose the same APIs that my component exposes, right? So essentially the my component function. So um, let's create this, my component, and this will be my component.js. Okay, now that we have our application root, oh sorry, the application plugin set up, we need to create an application root. So let's take the file name here and let's create an application root in the same directory. I'm just going to name it TS because we are using TypeScript and let's bootstrap our application and we'll put the bootstrap in a different file. Yes, and let's create our bootstrap. This is going to be a TSX because we are bootstrapping a React application, obviously. All right. I'm just going to quickly copy paste a snippet here. We have our bootstrap here. It's just a basic way where we just bootstrap our application to the client. Nothing too fancy. Just create an element root and mount it there, uh, mount the component there. All right. So now let's see what happens. Uh, what do we do next once we have an application plugin? So we will run the bit app list command. With this command, it will simply find all components in the workspace that are also applications. Okay, we see that bit found my component as an application, so we can go ahead and try and run it. We'll do bit run my component. Okay, as the application is running, let's go ahead to our browser and see exactly what we deal with. So let's browse localhost 3000 and we'll directly browse to nf-manifest.json to see exactly that we have a model federation server that serves our application in the um, federation runtime uh, manifesting format. Great. So 
now that we see this, the next um, thing we want to do is figure out, okay, do, how do we deploy this now, right? Because this is a component, we already know how to version, we only know how to npm install it, but deployment works slightly differently. So let's go back to the IDE and cover deployment. What I have here in this IDE is a very small bit workspace with a very basic component called my component. In this case, this is a React component, but this can be any type of component. And what we will do in this demo is we'll enhance this and add an application plugin and use the Model Federation RSpec based plugin to make this available in runtime. To do that, we'll first, first thing first, we'll create a new file in my component. That file will be my component.bitapp.ts. It's important to have the bit-app.ts file in this component, as what we want to do is we want to make sure that bit is able to understand this is a plugin file for bit. Okay, so um, we already know that this that we can npm install the component and use it normally as a package, consume through index and others. But uh, with model federation and runtime composition, things get a little bit more complicated. First thing first, um, Bit does not provide a runtime server for serving federation um, remotes. This means that you need to take the generated artifacts and bundles from this component and place them on your own hosting provider. And there are two ways where you can achieve that. First of all, uh, the application plugin, and essentially any application plugin, has an ability to uh, use an optional deploy function uh, for Bit. As you can see, we can just pass any deploy function that we want written in JavaScript TypeScript. There are a number of preset uh, deployers that we already support, but you can write your own deployer um, for Bit and essentially during your Bit snap or Bit tag, whether you run this on Ripple CI or your own CI, that function, the deployment function will get triggered and will be able to ship it, uh, to ship your component or your bundle to wherever is needed. The other option is um, essentially, well, if this is a programmatic option, the other option would be more manual script oriented way. So um, during the build process, Bit will generate a, a bundle artifact alongside the rest of the artifacts for this component. So, and what you want to do is you want to pull that artifact and ship it and deploy it to any place that you prefer. So let's run Bit tag here on my machine so we can generate those artifacts and we can pull them later. And we'll use the build flag here just because we don't want to go through CI or Ripple CI. We just want to build and see the artifacts. Okay, so now that our build is complete, let's see exactly what happened because as we see, there is another step for uh, an application build that was running during this process. Uh, effectively, our spec run and build our federated uh, module here in this project for this particular component. So how do we get this artifact? Lucky for us, we have the bit artifact command, and we can use that to pull any artifact that was generated for any past revision of a component. So let's use the bit artifacts command to first of all see all the artifacts that are generated on the latest. Great, so we see here all the generated artifacts, and as I mentioned, there is a transpile output disk that is getting packaged um, for consumers, right? A package generated, so the component is still available to be npm installed. But more importantly, as per our demo, we see that there was a new build application stage and an application bundle was formed. So how do we take this? What we need to do is we need to still use the bit artifacts command, but this time ask for a specific task. And essentially this gets all the artifacts generated in that task, and we can pass it to an out deal called bundle. Right. So we've created a bundle directory here with all of the artifacts, and now I can ship this to um, any target deployer that I want. Last but not least, and before we wrap this up, let's talk a little bit about environment. So Model Federation has a specific feature for um, Model Federation types for the different hooks and capabilities it provides, uh, and this can enhance your development experience. Because here in this project, I don't have a unique uh, environment for my component, it's just a basic React environment. In your case, you may use the default React environment provided by Bit, or you have your own custom environments. Regardless, there are two things you can do. The first thing, and probably the easiest thing, is to change the environment of your component to be the model federation environment for React. How do we do that? First of all, let's go to our um, model federation scope. 
and we see here that there is a dedicated environment for model federation and react let's take it and let's apply this to our component so we do bit env set name our component and pass the uh, model federation um, environment to make it take effect i'll need to run bit install so while i do that let me also explain to you what is exactly happening behind the scenes so in case you have a custom environment you can replicate this exact thing so here if we go to model federation react environment and let's see the implementation code behind let's hop into the bit environment file and here in the compile function we see that we add another types to resolve the model federation type resolution this essentially adds uh, that feature to your component so you will have a much better development experience um, the federation runtime will be able to assist you with uh, type inference for various features and you'll have much easier time developing so just to re recap you can either have a predefined oh so you can either use the predefined model federation react environment or you can go to your custom environment add the additional set of types and you're up to the races with that have a wonderful day and uh, happy